dang it. It's everywhere. Kitchen knives. We all use them, so I figured this might be the most useful knife as a wedding gift. I wanted to try out this 50mm wide and only 2mm thick steel blank I recently bought to see whether I could do big chef knives without having to forge them. Now that the rough shape was done, I went over to the bolster. For this I chose nickel silver because of its high corrosion resistance and it just looks classier than stainless steel. Because the blade will have a rather simple design, I wanted to try something different with the bolster. But first I had to drill a hole for the tank. Since the bolster will have a somewhat silvery look, I wanted to pick a very dark wood that would give a nice contrast to this. And I've still got a lot of this wood left, which is the same I used for the dagger. But as you can see, the block is pretty thick. So I'll try to cut it down the middle and see if I can actually make two pieces out of this. Especially for a chef knife, I don't think you need such a big, or rather such a wide handle. So this is still two and a half centimeters wide. And I think there would be enough for a handle. And I also wanted to cut this open because with the dagger you can see that the grain runs very straight and very parallel and it doesn't make for such a nice look. But the side looks extremely nice so I want to have as much visible of this as possible. Before firm recycling I want to add my logo. For that I made this punch about a year ago and in a second I'll tell you why I haven't used it that often before. Yeah, the blade was cool before I even started punching and to make things worse the punch is kind of crooked so I hit it at an angle so that only half my logo was visible. I tried punching the other half but couldn't line it up correctly which resulted in two overlapping imprints. Thankfully I prepared a second blade in case that happens. Since the first one cooled so rapidly I thought using wood as a surface might retain more heat until I'm ready to punch but that just resulted in me denting the whole surface around the logo without even leaving a proper imprint. But hey, the wood looked pretty cool though. Now with two blades messed up, I bit the bullet and ordered a professionally made punch so that nothing can go wrong the third time around. Now that I screwed it up a third time already, I decided I should maybe just move on. Okay, now time to get off the scale so that I can probably mark where the bevels will be. Oh boy, I really want to bite myself in the ass right now. I especially love that the test punch I did looks significantly better than this one. But hey, it is what it is, time to move on with the bevels. Okay, I actually ended up only going about half of what I scribed at first because two millimeters is really way too thin. This bevel angle is already steep enough and it's really difficult to grind something so thin freehand and yeah, I think I did a somewhat decent job to keep it even. As you can see there are some slight dips but I think it will be fine. But to be honest, I have no idea this is my first kitchen knife. So let's see how it turns out.
All right, I've got the cheeks evenly centered to 240 grit. And now let's take a little bit of a coffee bath. And now I'll let this sit for the duration of exactly one barbecue. <sighs> okay, as you can see, not very much happened. So I guess I'll let it sit in here for the rest of the night and then we'll see how it looks tomorrow. Now it's been roughly 22 hours and... Hmm... What the... Okay, this is exactly the reverse of what I had planned. The inverse, yeah. Um, I'll wash it off and then we'll have a closer look at it. Okay, I put some oil on there immediately because this stuff really likes to rust. I wanted the cheek to look like the bevel, or maybe I'll just leave it like this. Let's see. All right, I made a new bolster piece. Because of bending the first piece, the tank slot widened on one side, and in order to clean that up, the hole would be way bigger than two millimeters, and this would result in a huge gap between the bolster and the tank. With the third blade, I reshaped the tank to have the bolster slide onto it with a slit, rather than through a slot. Now that I have all the components done, it's time to start shaping the handle. I don't know what's the deal with me and tight schedules, but I've got one and a half hours to finish this thing. And yeah, let's see if I can make it. I've got everything that needed to be finished in the workshop done and now I can finish the rest at home with just my tiny desk wipes. After making sure all the scratches are out of the bolster, I'm applying some Danish oil as a base coat for my handle. Once that's dried, hit it with the buffing wheel with some compound. The drill attachment doesn't get as high a gloss as the buffing wheel at my grinder, but it gets the job done. As with many knives before, I want to coat the handle in CA glue to make it as low maintenance as possible. I cover the handle with a thin layer twice, give it a sanding with 1000 grit and then add a third coat which I sand from 1000 to 3000 grit. Buff it again and we're left with a nice glossy sheen and a completely water resistant handle. And now let's see how it performs. And here you can see why you usually don't want to do these tests with a knife that goes out to a customer because even some cardboard leaves scratches like this. This just feels wrong. It's not a real high-end knife but I take good care of it and yeah. But I wanted to show you what kind of shit I do just to entertain you guys. I want to film the intro. So this has to be very dull. Uh. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 